Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Naomi and today we shall be looking into types of contract documents and their importance. Whenever we have a contract between a contractor and a client, there are documents that are supposed to be involved. Such documents are like the working drawings, specifications, bill of quantities, form of tender, schedule of rates, form of agreement, and condition of contract. We are going to discuss each one by one. The working drawings, they usually include road plans, elevations, sections, and large-scale drawings of the proposed construction project, of which should be able to interpret the project at hand. When the contractor gets the drawings, he should be able to get a clear picture about the project. Drawings of a building or a structure show the or a structure show the arrangement of the rooms and various dimensions, e.g., the breadth, height, and length, with very few descriptions of parts. So the working drawings basically shows the design of the project. The other document we have is the specification is a document prepared by the architect to supplement the drawing. It specifies or describes the nature and class of work and materials to be used in various parts of the work, from foundation to superstructure in details, as well as methods of work that should be used. It is a short description of parts of work, specified materials, proportions, qualities, etc. For example, foundation shall be in brickwork with lime mortar, or cement mortar, 1 is to 6. The specification gives finer details about the construction materials that should be used. Be used. The ratio of the mortar, the ratio of the concrete, the types of tiles, it goes into finer details. Whatever could not be written in the drawings, the specification usually has that information. The third document is the bill of quantity. It is usually prepared for the client quantity surveyor, whose fee is paid by the client. Copies of the bill of quantity are sent to the contractor to enable them to estimate when tendering. The bill of quantity specifies the type of materials, methods of work, and the quantities of work to be done. You remember when we were taking doing the tip, I told you that the quantity surveyor gives instruction, excavate, oversight, and deposit soil away from the site so he gives the type of materials that shall be used and also he gives the directions about how the work shall be done in the bill of quantities quantities the bill of quantity usually gives the price of the project the fourth one is the form of tender is a pre-printed form of offer usually in a letter form, which ensures that all tenders are received on the same basis and should be simple to compare. The, tender, the tenderer fills in his name and address and sum of money, that is the contract sum, is an offer to carry out and complete the works as described in the conditions, drawings, and bill of quantities. So all tenderers are required to fill the form of tender. It's just like a summary showing the to do the work according to the drawings and the bill of quantities and the, he will expect to be paid the sum on the BQ. It's like an offer he's giving to the client that he's ready to take up the work. The fifth one is the schedule of rates. In, a, in appearance, they are similar to a page of bill of quantities without any quantities given. The contractor simply inserts his rates upon which tender is based against each description of work included on the schedule. In practice, only the major works items of significant cost and value are included. Those rates can then be used to value any variations. Schedule of rates are also used to obtain tenders for maintainers works. The difference between the BQ and the schedule of rates is just that the schedule of rates is not filled in the unit rate column so the contractor should go and fill this unit rate so that now the total sum that he shall get we shall be able to compare between different contractors so that we can know who is which we shall award the tender the sixth one is the form of agreement this is a long legal document signed by both parties 
agreeing to abide to the conditions of contract. It states that the contractor accepts to put up the building in accordance with drawings and specifications, and the client agrees for his part to pay the contract sum. Once the form of agreement is filled, it is shows, shows that the contractor and the client are entering to the contract. They have formed an agreement that the contractor shall deliver the building, then the client shall pay the contractor. The last one is the conditions of contract. They are clauses in the agreement of which is stated and observed by the construction team. It defines the responsibility of the employer, contractor, architect, engineer, and other technical staff. Whenever a contract is entered, there is this conditions of contract which shows the rules of, rules of everyone so that to avoid people overstepping their role. Now we are going to look at the importance of contract documents. Number one is that the written carefully and clearly defines the party's agreement, their expectations, and their respective risks and obligation. These contract documents will define the party's agreement, for example, the form of agreement. Then they will show their expectations. I expect you to deliver the project for the client. Then the contractor expects to be paid by the expects to be paid by the client. These contract documents are very useful in case disputes arise. For example, if there is dispute in terms of price, they should consult the bill of quantity. If there are disputes in terms of the design, they should go to the drawings. If there are disputes about the roles of the people in the project, they should go to the conditions of contract. Number three, they provide a clear roadmap at the onset of the project of how the parties will proceed to carry out the work, which helps to ensure that the project runs smoothly and diminishing the risk of potentially fatal problems. The roadmap is set by the drawings, the specification, as in everything is set clearly, so that we can av avoid issues once the contract has been awarded and now we are, we are constructing. Or the, some people may say that they did not give that type of tile that was to be used, the exact ratio of concrete. So these contract documents, they help to reduce potential problems before the project begins. The last one, in case of dispute, it leads to more efficient and less costly resolution of disputes since there will be fewer, be fewer issues to legitimately fight over because disputes may come up. So the, the, the advantage of this contract document is that they reduce the cost of resolution of disputes because we just need to go back to the contract document to see what agreed over and the dispute shall be solved unlike if we do not have the contract documents. I believe we have learned a lot about the contract documents. These are documents that have to be there when a contractor and a client are getting into the contract and we have learned their importance and maybe there's an importance that we have left and we haven't mentioned kindly write it in the comment section and let us learn together just in case you have other topics that you would want us to cover in the future kindly write them in the comment section and please remember to remember to subscribe and also to tell a friend to come and revise for exams. Thanks for watching. See you in the Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Naomi and today we shall be looking into types of contract documents.